So pivoting completely differently, different direction. Well, actually, before you pivot, I'm going to pee. You can pee and pivot. Yeah, pee and pivot. Oh, the other thing that happened this week was uh, Bram Bram died. Oh yeah, creator of Vim. Yeah. So I didn't do any Wikipedia deep dives, and I didn't. I wasn't aware of Bram. Uh, could you tell me, like, was did, so V already existed, and then he created Vim? What's the story? Who who was Bram? I don't I don't know much about it. I just remember his name forever, and that he created Vim, and he was like the BDFL for it i'm sorry uh, what's that benevolent dictator for life oh okay it's, it's the I didn't highest know there was open a, source title that you could you can acquire oh it's like an official thing that that people say it, no it's, it's not an official thing i think there's a bunch of projects that run this way like linux has linus who's a bdfl yeah uh it's a few projects that run this way and it's like a great example of Technically, the best short-term form of leadership is a dictator that's very competent. It doesn't work long-term because mm. a person that succeeds them is usually their idiot kid. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. In this case, uh. I don't think that's how it's gonna it's gonna pass. But it's it is like a very effect, like a, a bunch of projects that are have lasted like decades have have operated this way i mean like linux is such a crazy impactful thing and it runs this way so interesting i mean it, i like thought about it for a little bit and i was like you know what this is like maybe one of uh, this is like kind of a unique moment for me because and probably for a lot of people our age because this is someone that you know has had like a crazy impact on my literal everyday life for yeah a very long time it's like he made the thing that helps me make money that helps me get all the things that i want in my life uh, yeah and so yeah it's like oh this person died i don't really know anything about them but like deeply impactful to me even though i've like really never thought about them or like know much about them or converse with them or anything so i feel a little guilty sharing similar sentiments given that i've been using them for like seven months <laughs> but it's been a very impactful seven months for me can i say that I mean, I did spend 15 years as a software developer not you, using them. You tapped into like a whole community and like, you know, you met people. I did. It. I've met yeah. people. Yeah. So many close relationships. It's such an interesting community. Like it, when you think about just like editing text files more efficiently, such an interesting thing to have such a like passion around. But it is one of the things I'm more into now in terms of my craft than anything. Like I'm more excited about learning new Vim things. It just gave me something at this stage of my career that I was just kind of bored. I mean, with like yeah. the normal everyday software development stuff. So yeah, no, it, it has been really a, a really great year or whatever it's been of, of learning them, getting to know all these people that are super into it, diving into the Neo Vim world. Uh, yeah, no, it really has. I, I kind of like, I, I just feel bad. Like you've been using it for 10 years and, and like, you can say these very nice, kind words about Bram. And I'm like, uh <laughs> <laughs> similar but shorter well okay you 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 can rephrase it as despite only having used it for seven months he's managed to make an impact in my life that's a great way thank you dax just yes that's what i meant to say flipped it flipped it turned it upside down and now it's good and now it's uh, good yeah so i think it's, it was a unique experience and i think this is the first time i'm experiencing something like this where Someone I didn't know died, but it like weirdly feels personal. And imagine as you get older, like this obviously starts to happen more and there's like artists or musicians or whatever uh, that die. I think about like Christopher Nolan, who like whose movies I absolutely love. And yeah. like, one day there's going to be like the last Christopher Nolan film and he's going to die at some point. And it's going to like deeply affect me. And I'm like, damn, that is really crazy. That is crazy. I was just thinking the other day, I don't know why I was thinking this, but I thought like, I need to look up what celebrities have died in the last year. Cause I bet there's a bunch of people that I'd be like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like consume any media to know like when that stuff happens. And I know there's been times where it's like you learn two or three years later that somebody died. And you're like, they're never going to be in another movie. Wow. Yeah. It is crazy to think that. I feel like I'm really uh, shallow and surface level here with your deep connections to humanity. 
<laughs> well, I, I mean, I started the movie thing. There's not going to be another movie. Okay, yeah, yeah, died, yeah. So. <laughs> you, you brought up Hollywood. Yeah, so yeah. that's your fault. Yeah, you should you should watch. I know you don't watch a lot of movies, but you should watch Oppenheimer. It was uh, fun. Yeah, I want to. I saw it as two weeks ago. I have never had this reaction to any movie ever. I finished watching the movie and me and Liz were walking out and I like couldn't talk like it like affected me in such like, whoa, a deep way that I needed like 10 minutes to like, I don't know. It just, it was, it was just such like an, like three hours of emotion. And I was like, really? Yeah. Like I'm now I'm never, very intrigued. I think f- from my point of view, I describe it as like the saddest movie I've ever seen. Uh, oh. And the reason being is it's about something it's, a, it's about achieving something really great, like working extremely hard against crazy odds with thousands of people and achieving like complete greatness. But it is like there's no glory and it's all sad. So it's so mm. weird to see a movie about achievement like we've seen that before like any like biopic about someone great it's like they struggle and then they win and then it's great after but this was like they struggled they did it and then they struggled more with everything everything they came after so yeah yeah that hit me really really hard huh well i was not expecting sad i don't know i didn't know really much about it i just know it's about me neither oppenheimer like that's what i know yeah the acting was amazing like chris Nolan is very very good at telling stories he's just so good at like going so deep and like hitting on like the deepest points in a very digestible way yeah so like his stuff is very mainstream but i think it straddles like just because it's mainstream doesn't mean it's like less valuable or dumber or dumbed down or anything it's like as deep as yeah a lot of times mainstream means kind of dumbed down yeah i mean like marvel movies it's like there's no there's not depth there right yeah i don't know i haven't seen the marvel movies what am i talking no, about no no you're you know you're, okay. you're right it's like i think i think sometimes he gets categorized that because like everyone loves his movies so when i say i'm a big fan of his movies uh, like, oh yeah of course but like i think he's truly unique in that everyone does love his movies and that doesn't take away from from anything it's almost got that indie quality of yeah. like storytelling and all that yeah I gotcha. Yeah, exactly. I want to take my eight-year-old to... He's never been in the movie theater. I want to take him to this first... Well, not to Oppenheimer, probably. I don't think it's... Is it suitable for an eight-year-old? I don't know. You can tell me. I don't think the theme of it... I think it would just be boring to him. And I'm... Like, one of my biggest realizations as I got older was... When I was little, I would watch things and they wouldn't hit me... They wouldn't affect me as emotionally. Like, I could watch stuff that's, like, really sad or, like, whatever. Like, it just... It would just kind of go over my head. And now I watch the same stuff and I'm like so deeply affected by it. So I think for him, it would just be boring and you'll just be like <laughs> sitting next to him, like going through a whole journey. <laughs> I mean, I'm already not sure if he'll enjoy sitting for the length of a movie. I don't know if yeah. he's set that long for anything. You should just find a short movie because some movies are short. I thought about when Mario was out and everybody was talking about Mario. Mario was a good short movie. I was actually going to suggest Somebody that. said there's a, the Ninja Turtles is, is a new movie that oh, is there maybe he would like. Okay. I think so. I don't know if it's short. Does he like Ninja Turtles? Uh, no, never heard of him, but <laughs> heard of him. I was really into him as a kid. So maybe, <laughs> Me too, maybe it's genetic. Too. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's genetic. It was our, it was <laughs> <laughs> something about mutant turtles. that just does it for, for us. I don't Yeah. I don't know. It was, I think that was our era. That's surprising to me. They're still doing new ones. I, I wonder, is it like, is it live action? Like that one movie where there's like the really creepy shredder. Is oh, it a cartoon? Do you remember those movies? The the live action. Oh, I ones? do. Yeah, I they, were <laughs> they were no, weird. No, no, I mean, I loved it. Yeah, but <laughs> they were really funny. in retrospect. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what did Splinter look like in that. Was he an actual rat in the one we're talking about? Well, I mean, they're all like wearing these costumes that with the mouths that move, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're very clearly like prosthetic. Yeah, yeah. So I think mm. that, that's what it was. Um, the new one, I think. I think I know what you're talking about. The new one, it looks like. So there's been a bunch of uh, Spider Man movies like the new animated ones yeah and they are like some of the best animation i've ever seen they're like so unique and like so much going on in every scene and i think yeah. this new ninja turtles one it like looks similar so i'm wondering if like the same people were kind of so involved. it is an animated kind of thing yeah i think so i didn't know there were new spider-man movies there there's there have like been so par- many there's spider-man like, movies there's so many that there's two parallel streams of like different there, there's like the live action ones going on yeah, with uh, you know, like the Marvel, the tr- traditional Marvel setup. Then there's like these animated ones going on, just completely in parallel, and they're like coming out at the same time. That's, that's wild. How, that's it's how into Spider Man we are. Once Disney gets a hold of something, 
Yeah. They just, they blow it out. Yeah. Is, is everyone going to get tired of the Marvel and like Lucas franchises? Like, have they just drowned, like, ground those into the, drove those into the ground? What am I looking for? I think for they have. I think we're past the peak of the Marvel stuff. And I actually think Disney kind of recognizes it. Like, I know they're, they're like not trying. I can tell that they're still doing stuff, but it seems like they're kind of like winding it down. But I do wonder. Yeah what the next thing they need to replace it with because they, they made so much money. Like oh, yeah. They were like driving so much money for the last 10 years. And now you have to like replace that with something that makes as much or, or more. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is. Star Wars, I feel like they, once I took it over, I feel like not much good ever came from there. Like some of it was, the best stuff was like fine. Um, so I feel like that like never really sparked back up again. But yeah, I don't know what they do. Yeah, what a weird... What a weird history Star Wars as a as a franchise has. Like the original three movies just being these like just huge iconic movies in pop culture. And, and then so they made old. those they came they're out so old, so yeah. Long ago. And yeah. then like just the the crazy fanaticism that that drove. And then you got these the next three with like Jar Jar Binks and all that. I don't know, maybe the maybe the next three weren't all bad, but that first one that, that came out was like bizarre you, you want to hear something messed up yes okay my personal experience is okay so what you just said is how everyone feels and most people feel yeah but my personal experience was uh seeing the phantom menace which is the the, the first movie yeah the first about, new one that came was out like yeah. one of my first memories of being in america and like i was like america's freaking ah. awesome this wasn't even this was like years after like my family first came here but i remember my yeah. parents taking me to the movie theater i had no idea what movie i was going to watch and the first scene, Qui Gon Jinn like lights up his lightsaber and cuts through oh, the wall. Man, I'm yeah. just like, I, I'm in okay. it. Like, this is like the best thing I've ever seen in my whole life, and I'm so glad I'm. Can here. I just say, I think it's actually good. I do. <laughs> I, Darth Maul, like I'm remembering all of the like marketing leading up to that. It was on every like Taco Bell cup. Like it was <laughs> yes. a huge, huge deal, and and I don't think I was disappointed. As a, I was a kid. I, I remember hearing in retrospect there, but it was like Jar Jar Binks was so stupid. I don't remember being that distracted by Jar Jar Binks. I felt like it was an epic Star Wars movie. There were lightsabers. The Darth Maul character was super cool yeah. like and menacing and all of that. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> the twist with the, the queen being the handmaiden, like that whole yes! thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was good. Okay. Thank you. I felt like it was like you weren't allowed to think that movie was good. It was good. And then the next two. Were the next two okay? Uh, well, the, they had like really terrible acting. Like some of the worst acting I've seen in my life comes from the second one. Oh, yeah, right. That Hayden, one guy. Hayden, Hayden the main, the Anakin guy. was. Yeah, he was bad. Yeah. Oh, the meme. I forget that we all see that meme like every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's when, yeah. Uh, I think that here's my theory. So, okay. So hands to roll back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Wrap uh, up your. I yeah. think that it demonstrates how much like nostalgia is a part of this stuff because we saw it as children so like we liked it because we were kids and we continue to like it yeah because of those memories i get why someone that saw star wars in the 80s and then like watched this 30 years later or whatever it was 25 years later was like that sucks like i totally yeah. get that because i feel that way about certain things that are coming out now yeah that makes sense like, it's, just, it's just crazy there's no objectivity to any of this like all these things affect you uh, but then going back to the, the acting, I'm convinced that uh, Hayden Christensen, the guy that played Anakin, I think he got screwed. Here's why. Not only is his acting bad in that movie, everyone's acting is bad in that movie. Uh, mm. Natalie Portman, who's like plays opposite to him. Yeah. Terrible, terrible acting, like just really bad. But she was already kind of famous and had a career and was able to have a career after. And she's been a great actress in other movies. So yeah, I'm yeah. convinced something about the directing. There's something about the directing there. Yeah, George they're, Lucas they're, did this, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So I think he was into this, like, and he's even described these movies as like a soap opera. I think he's into like the soap opera drama of it, and he was trying to get everyone to like do that, but it, it wasn't natural. So I think he got screwed, and everyone was like, "That's the first time we saw you act. We think you suck, and now your whole career." <laughs> well, that is sucks done. for yeah for that guy. Yeah, because did he really do anything after that? I don't know. I, and he doesn't look too great these days, so I don't know. So maybe it's just that George Lucas... Was it like 30 years later from when the last... The first, Star, the first Star Wars came, was, came out in like the, the 70s, 70s right? right? Like 79 yeah, so or it was, something? It was something like 30, almost 30 years later. Be, maybe really he just sick. wasn't very good at it 30 years later. Think like 30 years from now. You think he'll be like a great programmer? I don't know. Maybe. 1977. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess like the techniques changed and like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe the first movies weren't even that good. Like, <laughs> maybe they weren't. Uh, yeah, maybe they weren't. It's just like at the time, it, it was, was like it was like people it latched was, on. It yeah. was unique. Yeah, this story was very unique. Interesting. Yeah, maybe he got too much credit. I don't know. I don't know. I'm glad he became rich though, because it spawned such an ecosystem, like all the video games and the toys, and it was a big part of my childhood. Oh yeah, so, so much that IP is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure the news, the stuff that Disney does, they're just good at stuff. I'm sure it's good. It can't be bad. But if you're like a Star Wars fan, maybe it's not what you're looking for i think I there's know. just a floor like disney will guarantee that it never gets worse then. exactly yeah but, like i don't know I, I haven't i'm like into that world and like not much of it has has drawn me back yeah so, no i haven't watched even any as someone it. that watches a lot of tv is it on netflix no they have their own thing disney plus yeah disney plus yeah disney's an interesting like an interesting business case study yeah. i mean like the espn situation has mm-hmm. it's a whole onion in its own with mm-hmm. layers and layers of how do they get out of their situation with yeah. the sports rights and all that stuff. Yeah. And now Apple's in that space too because they have uh they have the um the soccer rights. Uh, oh, which, did they? I don't know. So I didn't Frank know told me bought, something. I don't know yeah. if he was joking, but I can believe this to be real. Uh Messi joining my the team in Miami here. Yeah. Is impacting Apple's he was like it's impacting Apple's earnings reports. Wow. Because like soccer viewership is so up yeah. like, just from this one person. Have you bumped into Messi yet? I mean like No, I'm sure like, I will. At like, the it's just a, or just a matter of at the public. Yeah, it's just a matter of <laughs> I forgot you know what that is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just a matter of time. It's just like just Miami's a matter of small. time. Miami's not that big. Yeah. Yeah. I Only a few about. million people. Uh <laughs> man, people are so happy and like I don't think they've lost a game yet since he joined. They were the worst oh, really? they were the worst ranked team. Is he like, is he past his prime even? He's got to be getting older, isn't he? Yeah, but he he just like won a World Cup. Like he's still really good. And oh, he's still really good. Yeah. Even past. It's like Jordan past his prime is still better yeah. than most. Yeah. Sorry. And he's a. Uh... He's playing in like the American League, which isn't, you know, the most competitive thing. So the American he's... League, like MLS is split into two leagues or you're just saying no, the MLS. Sorry, I meant just like it's different than playing in Europe. Yeah. You know? Like we suck at soccer. Yeah. yeah I mean, football. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Yeah. I wish we didn't. I wish we were like, I wish that was the sport. So we this could, could like, kick fit off in. a thing like, you, like Maybe. it's, it's yeah, always like singular been... moments like this. Like when F1 got the Netflix thing that like 100x that sport in terms of interest, like that it could be the thing. That it could be a thing. I just I wish our kids would grow up. Yeah. And use the metric system and like soccer. Metric is good. Right? I had an old teacher in like middle school, uh, Dan Zorn. Uh, he was the best. And he would say like, how dumb the American standard measurement system or whatever it's called, the imperial system, how dumb it is. Because like you take a kid in elementary and you're like, how many uh, cubic inches in a gallon? And they'll just <laughs> stare at you. Like, I have no idea. But you ask any like five-year-old in Europe how many cubic centimeters in a liter and they know it's like a thousand or whatever because yeah. everything is it's all related volume you know distance surface area all that stuff is Multiples like all correlated 10, like, yeah. yeah we have 10 fingers why do we it do all, all these dumb it all, things it all, yeah it, okay yeah, so why are there 12 inches in a foot sorry go ahead here's a one thing i'm gonna bring up though uh i agree the metric system is better for most things the reason i say most is because i disagree with one thing oh can i guess yes uh miles no versus kilometer no no okay, go ahead uh it's temperature I have no idea. okay temperature oh yeah okay fahrenheit's at nice first it seems like oh uh the way they do temperature makes sense it's like zero you know, and a hundred zero yeah. hundred whatever but you allocate so much space to temperatures that humans never experience it's true it's like i do i do have a problem with that yeah it's like you never really reach temperatures above a certain number and like half the scale is yeah. allocated to that. And it's then, like scientists made the scale and they were like, this is great exactly. for when we're boiling stuff in yeah. liquid whatever. Because <laughs> like in rock. Fahrenheit, you no, know, there is a, cl- when it's 65 degrees versus 75 degrees, that's like a very big difference. And we have yeah. like 10 numbers in between in, t- in between to like describe yeah. that. Whereas, you know, it's not the case for temperature. And I feel like when I point this out, I don't, it, it does seem controversial. People are like, no. Mm. Everything America <laughs> no. does is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. Like, you make enough mistakes. I know. Like, I get it. We've, too. we've done that. 100% on board with distance, weight, metric, definitely better, but I'm fine with temperature. Is it possible to like teach our kids in America those things? Like, I, I bet at this age, they're sponges. They could just pick all that stuff up. But if we don't use it in the house, 
then they're just not going to really latch onto it. I just feel like with the globalization and like internet connectedness, I just feel more and more like this stepchild, this like idiot brother, because I don't know anything anyone's talking about. Like, oh, you like soccer. Oh, it's fun to watch soccer. Oh, okay. I guess. I don't know. I wish we fit in a little better. It's Yeah, it goes both ways. It's also incredible that <laughs> how much culture we export. That we oh, that's just, true. You've, like, you've talked about that. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It is really like insane. they watch our movies and stuff. Do, do people like movies? And I'm oh, sorry, that sounded so awful and dumb. <laughs> do people like yeah, movies definitely don't, finish, else? definitely don't finish that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> it's funny because some of the best movies that have reached like critical acclaim, like even from the Oscars in the past couple of years, have been foreign. Oops, so, I'm sorry. I'm such uh-oh. an American trope. Do they have cameras? Do, do, they, they, yeah. do they have electricity <laughs> out there? <laughs> you send them I the should feel really bad because I people give me that I with the Ozarks. What people expect out of the Ozarks? Like they have TVs in the Ozarks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. Let's take a quick break for some totally normal reasons <laughs> that aren't being. So, <laughs> and now we're back. <laughs> and now we're back. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about Go because people are talking about Go again. Oh yeah, people are talking about Go mutterings. So I've said for a long time that Go would be such a good language if the language wasn't so bad, because <laughs> uh, there's so many things about it that I love. I love how it's just compiled to a single binary. You can compile it, cross compile for Linux, Mac, whatever. Uh, standard library is like pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, it's pretty fast. But the language yeah. itself is like such a pain to write. It's like the type system was like really immature and didn't have generics at one point. It was like very little inference. Um, and that's what was kind of stopping me from continuing to use it. And I use it for like almost four years, I think. Um, maybe more than four years. And I just grew to hate it over that time. But it's and it's been a while since then. It's been maybe like five years since then. And it's developing more. It's like developed more. And there's this new 1.21 release that people are pretty interested and excited about. Uh, introduces some inference for generic functions so that you don't have to like constantly pass in like the generic type, things like that. Yeah. Um, I'm impressed because there was a time where the creators were like even against adding generics because uh, they like yeah. add too much complexity. Add too much. They're like very anti anything that even feels like it can make the language more complicated. Yeah, uh, and I'm and so that's one. That's kind of when I gave up on it. I was like, I feel the culture isn't aligned with with what I what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems like people kept kind of fighting and they pushed it through, and now it's getting towards stuff that is kind of complicated, but I think generally makes a makes the language better and i've been saying for a while uh for the st team that we should like at some point we should really focus on the go market and like try to market directly to them and like make that experience yeah really good uh because it is a fantastic choice for serverless like writing your functions in go like cold starts are fast and like performance is fast like everything everything is it's like a really good option between something really high level like JavaScript and something like way too low level like Rust. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited to like see that make it come back because I kind of gave up on it at some point. Yeah, we just had, so I just had this company offsite and one night in the hot tub, honestly, that's where it was. I I just, it occurred to me that, yeah. (laughs) In the hot tub, we had a conversation, me and a handful of engineers on the team about kind of like all the landscape of languages we had this big conversation about, and I remember my feeling was like, I wouldn't consider Go and Rust as like two choices I'm choosing between because they feel very different. And then somebody pointed out that Go is garbage collected. Mm-hmm. If you're trying to move from some language and you're choosing between like are Go and Rust two choices that you would right, make, yeah, something awesome like that, like are yeah. they comparable languages? Basically, That was the gist of it. Are they comparable languages? And I felt like no, and I, don't, I couldn't tell anybody why. Just like, no, they don't feel the same. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think from a technical point of view, you're correct in that, like, they're very different. I think I see why people compare them because like they're Rust, compiled. They're fast. Yeah, they're compiled. But I think Rust tries to get people try to put Rust in places where it doesn't belong in places where Go belongs. So they end up being compared. And I think in those yeah. situations, like, you should always just pick Go. I think Rust is like, if you really consider like the rain, the places where it makes sense, it's like pretty narrow. It's like a good yeah. language, but yeah, it's more of like that's what I said. It's more like a specialty language in my mind. Yeah, exactly. Like, the embedded systems thing makes sense. Like <clears throat> the safety is like a big thing, right? Exactly. So like even there, like the one time I worked on embedded systems, I actually moved them from C to Go 
And that was great. And I continue to use it today. And a bunch of devices, they're like three generations down and they're still running on, on Go yeah. firmware. So even there, it's like, it's not as clear cut as, oh, I'm embedded, so I should be using Rust. It's again, so it depends on, on what you're doing. They got so many things right outside of the language of like how to deploy it, how to like compile it, like it's fast to compile, all that stuff they did. Um, garbage collection is completely fine for most cases. Uh, so everything about it was just good, but when you go and use a language every day, it's like, this doesn't <laughs> feel fun. Like I don't feel good using it. Yeah. I remember now it was C++. That was the question. It's like, if you're looking okay, for an alternative, like you're trying to move off of C++, it, like why would you choose Go or Rust? I think that was sort of the question. Yeah. I mean, even that, it just, it just like it really depends on, on what you're doing. Um, Are you streaming on Twitch? Then you go with Rust. If, you're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you need to tell people you're smarter than them, you go with Rust. Um, Rust, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of excitement around Rust, but like almost nothing got shipped because it just doesn't make sense to use for the majority of things that people try to use it for. How, mu- how much did the like the whole foundation thing, did that actually affect, you think, adoption of the language? Like, will people choose Rust less because of that? I think if people are really honest with what happens, uh, and this is completely fine. It's not a criticism. This is like, I think people should be honest about this. We get bored and we want to try something new. Mm. So we try something new, but we pretend like it's some logical step of like i'm analyzing stuff i need to do and this language seems correct and that's why i'm excited about it and has all xyz things yeah uh but you're just bored and you want to want to change things and that's totally okay like i a lot of reasons i've shifted between languages in my career professionally have been just because i got bored i got into serverless because i was bored and i think there was a phase where people got bored with rust then they kind of got bored with rust and the rust foundation thing was happening at the same time so i think that just kind of like fuel the fire. People, yeah, that people move on to something else. Um, and you learn every time you're bored and you go try something new. So it's totally okay. So what what is the best, not even like has to be supported in SST or has to have really good support in SST, but like if you're building this sort of serverless, event-driven, lots of Lambda functions that are your back end, what is the best language in your mind? Like if you're going to choose one that's like S tier and all the rest fall below it. Unfortunately, it still is TypeScript because for, uh, it just depends. Like it's it's really between Go and TypeScript and I go between these two. Go is technically better if you just look at performance like, and like what actually happens at runtime. Like yeah, you should probably pick it. But from a tooling point of view, everything around it is going to be in TypeScript. Your front yeah. end, your infrastructure, everything else is going to be in TypeScript. So it's just hard to beat that synergy. But I can definitely see myself at some point writing all of my backend in Go again. Yeah. If the language gets better to the point where I'm like at least enjoying it a little, um, that'll push me over to to writing it more. Some time in the future, the SST CLI will be written in Go. That's just kind of inevitable. That's just going yeah. to happen. Um, so if I'm writing more stuff in Go, I'm probably just going to want to write my backend in Go as well. It isn't like the big strong suit of Go is the concurrency model, and wouldn't that like not be not a big matter. advantage in the serverless. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. So people really are like, Go has great concurrency. I don't think that's accurate. I think it's that Go has con- a concurrency model and other languages don't. So by don't. comparison, yeah. it has it. Uh, I don't think it has a great concurrency model. I think languages like Elixir have like a fantastic concurrency model. Go just has one. And it's good that it yeah. has one because other languages don't, and you can do things that you can't do otherwise. Um, you're right. It doesn't show up as much. But my challenge from the other day where I was like, I'm in a single Lambda function, but I still need to like make n number of requests out. Um, implementing that in Go would have been more performant. It actually doesn't look much better in Go than it does in, in JavaScript. Just because I'm saying like, the model isn't really... It's like not good. It just exists. Yeah. Uh, with the benefit that it does like CPU concurrency as well, which JavaScript would not do. So, but yeah, people like you for that reason. When I first got into Go, it was because I was building a web crawler and I was doing it in C Sharp and I couldn't get it to like be concurrent enough. Yeah. Um, and I switched to Go, which had like a more explicit concurrency model. So I did go for that reason, but I don't like view it as like, oh, this is like a really great thing about the language. Yeah, yeah. You said C Sharp. But why, why does nobody talk about C Sharp when like 90% of people writing code are writing C Sharp? I feel like it's never talked about. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I wrote C Sharp for a long time. I know you did as well. A yeah. lot of people that are like our age, 
like yeah. started out. We, that. we, we cut our teeth on C sharp. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I get why I wouldn't choose it in like a serverless context, like modern reasons, just the runtime yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. But it's still in use. And like a lot of people are shipping C sharp every day. And I feel like it's talked about zero on Twitter and the other places that I am. Yeah. Like it's funny because most languages will have some like delegates from the language that like show up in our bubble, right? Like, yeah. Uh, even stuff that's like just heavily used by enterprise people. Like some of those people leave and start companies and are more on like this sort of B online world. Um, like, like Java, like I hear, I see people using it. Um, but yeah, like you never hear from C sharp people. I don't know why. Don't know why. Just like, I guess if you're in that Microsoft bubble, if you're out there, let us know. I know some of you, but the people who I don't know, let us know. I don't know how, maybe on Twitter. <laughs> start talking about C sharp. Let's make it a thing. Let's just start making C sharp the big topic. Can we do that? Can we push? I think the secret is everyone is actually writing C sharp and they don't realize it. Oh, what do you mean? Because they're all writing TypeScript, which is oh, just yeah. C sharp. No, it's basically the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> made by the same old Anders. If Anders, you know, if Anders dies, whenever that is, maybe 20 years from now, I'm not trying to wish any, you know, timeline on Anders. But when he does, I'll feel that one. That was my whole, the start of my career. Yeah. And now with TypeScript, yeah. No, that's been my whole career. I've yeah. been in some way impacted by his work. It is crazy, like the whole C sharp TypeScript thing. Like I I mean, I've said this before, but I literally never most languages I sit down and like go to learn the language. I didn't do that with TypeScript. I just like started to write C sharp and I was like, all the syntax is just working. So <laughs> yeah. I don't have to go learn anything. <laughs> that they just like repurposed it and made it like crazy mess market appeal yeah and coming from microsoft too what a crazy turnaround microsoft we've i think we've talked about that right they just own so much of the developer touch points like they have yeah it is, yeah like it's it's so funny too to me because so many developers would be like stupid microsoft yeah like just like that's the in vogue thing to hate but like they use vs code they use github they use i mean granted that you know Microsoft bought some of these things like GitHub, but but yeah, at this point, but still, it's a Microsoft product. Yeah, why we? Oh, I don't want to go down that path again. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Sorry to go back down on the why is GitHub down all the time, and I was like, we've already. Well, I was going to say GitHub. Uh, GitHub reminded me. Uh, did you see our new GitHub handle? Oh, you got the SST. I did see that. Yeah, and that just redirects, right? Like nobody has to change anything. Like it just will redirect if you've got like your your local yeah, if you got your old stuff it'll because we also we also retain the old one and we got them instead of a redirect as you as everyone knows sst is just three people and i feel like every person has like a trait that is like a superpower and it like comes together really nicely yeah frank's superpower is and he'll say this himself he says this himself all the time he's like i'm not smart i just work really hard which sounds okay like you've heard that before but you do not understand what it means how hard he is like the most persistent person ever like he'll like take something to a place and you will have you would have given up like a hundred times before <laughs> like you could even get there he has been working so first uh the npm package we got the sst npm yeah, package i remember that yep i remember like kind of trying and i saw him trying and i was like okay this is never gonna happen he like just kept going at it for months and months and months <laughs> And finally contacted this, the random guy that had it, like found like he like contacted his past coworkers, like just did all <laughs> this like crazy like stuff and just never gave up, even though it didn't move an inch for like a very long time. Yeah, yeah. This GitHub thing, same story. Like it's probably been a year. I think we've been trying to get it for a year. Wow. And he's just been been trying and trying. And you mentioned Chris Munns earlier. Yeah. And Chris Munns actually was the one that introduced him to the person that helped us like figure wow. this out. So shout out right there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's uh it is just super persistent. So whenever we have a task that's like this is gonna be a slog. Yeah. Me and Jay are not the type of people that it's Frank. are gonna yeah. do that. Yeah. Frank's like, you guys, you guys are smart. I'll work hard together. We'll like <laughs> you know. I don't know if Frank listens, but uh if he does. Or if you just want to relay the message, uh, my birthday is in just a week or so, and I've been trying to get the Adam.dev on GitHub. I can't get a hold of the person. So if he wants to just like spend a year and give me a gift next time, this year, next time, next year, this time, uh, you know, I would appreciate that. 
I mean, okay. thank you, Frank. Thank you. I don't want to say appreciate. It's like A D A M D O T Dev. That's what you want. What A D A M D O T? Are you kidding me right now? Dev. Are you really trying to spell my handle because you don't see it on everything? I'm I'm Adam Dev on literally everything. I'm just clarifying it for. What? I don't know. What? I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it A-D-E-M or is that A-M? <laughs> no, no, because in my head, I was like seeing the oh, like dot, dot as a dot. Like but a I was dot. Like, no, yeah, no, I don't think out. you can do dot on no, no, GitHub, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I want it spelled out. Somebody has it. And I, for, for some reason, I thought it was a certain person I found on LinkedIn, but they never replied to me. I don't know. I didn't put much effort into it and I don't care that much. Well, I do care that much because someday I want to be anonymous. People are going to know that I'm Adam, but they won't know which Adam. They won't know my last. It's already too late. What do you? The, no, it's look, not. Look, Stop look it. I'm doing it. Just wait. Look behind you. It just says Adam dot Dev. I'm saying they're gonna know my name will still be Adam, but, but they won't know my last that name. You were the same. No, Adam no, no, no. That... no. Shh. Stop. No, we're gonna make this work. We're going anonymous. Dax. You're gonna have to like go up way harder on this if you want this to happen. You need, <laughs> you need to show up with like an anime profile picture and like just okay. Just Maybe be, I will. Yeah. Maybe I will. Then no one would ever suspect you of all people to do that. So <laughs> I mean they'll still know what my face looks like. But then you're not gonna be that anonymous. you I'm not looking yeah, I'm not looking to be completely anonymous. Just like it's hard to find out my real name. You know, that kind of anonymous. I want people to doubt is Adam even my name? But at this point, we can just run your face through facial recognition and it's gonna show up. <sighs> You're killing my dreams. I, I'm just You're killing all with you. my like, dreams. Your dreams Max. have died a while ago, and it's, it's well. Done. We'll see about that. Unless we? you want to go completely like, look. Once we make the, I'm going to disappear. Once we make the jump into the metaverse, then you can okay. look like whatever you want. And at that, are point, we not already in the metaverse? Isn't Twitter and all this stuff? Isn't that kind of already the metaverse? Okay, no, no. If we were in the metaverse, the fact that I messed up my knee would have no impact on my life because I could just do. Oh, everything. you're saying like it'll <laughs> yeah. all be virtual reality and like you will be a physical being in that? Just, just the next level, yeah. Okay, just the next okay. level where I can look like whatever I want. Yeah. How's your How's your knee, by the way? It feels basically normal. So I'm not. I'm oh, gonna, basically. Like, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna resist the temptation to like treat it like it's normal for at least another week, just in case. Mm, just rest up, yeah. But it feels. Fine. It's a little stiff, but fine. Continue going very hard in jujitsu. I have icy hot on my left elbow because it hurts a little more after every session. Uh, I should probably take a break. I just can't. I'm obsessed, Dax. It's my favorite thing in the world. Oh, Chris is asking if I posted the video of my knee. No, I did find the video on my phone. I will I will post it later. <laughs> it's funny. It's just me walking. I, I watched it again yesterday and I just walk up and I'm go and I go, I felt something pop. <laughs> it's riveting can't wait to see this all right we should probably get some work done this has been a long one today yeah i mean not this episode but the two episodes we just recorded is that is that should i not say that is that like too many peaks behind the curtain people are listening still i, I love the end of episodes because i feel like at this point we can say whatever we want it doesn't matter there's like 10 people still listening and they really like us apparently there's something offensive i'm not gonna do that I know there's all this stuff that you bottle up and you don't say, so you should just say it. Oh, I have a lot of things bottled up that I will not ever say, but I'm I'm not ever going to say them. That's the nature of bottling up. I don't know if you understand how bottles work, but you put a little bottles lid on it work. and it just <laughs> stuff stays in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. This has been fun. Thanks, Dax. Yep. See you.